What's good, y'all? It's your boy Havoc. Final round. About to do a little film study here. We got Triple G versus Canelo. The first fight. We're going to do the rematch later. And then the third fight is coming. It's going down. Uh, I'm not so excited for the third fight. Obviously, I didn't really care for it. Uh, not to say that I'm not going to watch it. I think there were better fights we could have saw Canelo in. I want to see him against Benavides. I want to see him against Charlo. I want to see him against Andrade. You know, somebody. Uh, hell, I wouldn't even mind seeing... Um, David Morrell, even though he's kind of got to build his resume up a little bit more. But nonetheless, there's some other fights I wanted to see him in. But I get it. This was probably a smart move by Canelo's team. Still lots of money to be made, and it's kind of a safer option, especially after the loss to Baval to take the route of Triple G. Still a lot of fans that want to see the third fight. <coughs> Let's just put it out there. A lot of fans want to see it, you know. Uh my thing is Triple G is an old man. He's burnt out. I didn't like what I saw against Murata. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe Triple G comes out, gives one last hurrah, one last beautiful performance. I think this will be one of his last fights. Um, I, I think he's hungry to get a W against Canelo. But, um, you know, he just looked very old his last fight. I don't like that he switched trainers. A while ago, he left Abel Sanchez. I thought Abel Sanchez was a good match with him and really highlighted what he did well as a pressure fighter. And he's kind of lost sight of that. Triple G looks old. He looks slow. So uh, Canelo, there's a few things I got to say about that, but I don't want to miss the fight tactics here. I'll break it down a little bit more as the fight goes on. Uh, what I think overall about the fight, but I will watch it. I will check it out. I'm more curious to see how Canelo will perform than I am Triple G. I'm curious to see if he can get a spectacular performance after the loss to Baval. But let's check it out. Triple G being the pressure fight he is, coming out immediately trying to control the center of the ring, which he is somewhat doing, but Canelo's willingly kind of going off the back foot, moving laterally here, going left to right, left to right bouncing left to right. It's going to pivot out here to the left. Very relaxed, very calm, composed. Smart move by Canelo. You know, Triple G's the bigger dude, effective uh, pressure fighter, uh, lots of power. So, you know, you kind of want to get a feel for what's going on. You don't want to jump into the fire just yet. And Canelo just doing the same thing, just kind of pivoting out to his left. Triple G controlling the center. Good jab by Triple G, but good head movement by Canelo. Really nice. That's the thing about Canelo. He can do a little bit of everything. He can he can come forward. He can go backward. He can box in the pocket. He's He's got a very diverse game. Good jab by Canelo and then going with the right cross down to the body. And this one's something I want everybody to take note of in this first fight. What made the difference and why it was a draw. If I'm not mistaken, I don't really remember what happened. But uh, Canelo went down to the body. And uh, uh, he went down to the body. You didn't see Triple G match that at all. As you saw Canelo go down with the right cross downstairs, you didn't see Triple G get back and tag Canelo downstairs. For some reason, Triple G lost sight of his body attack. Uh, and it was actually previous in prior fights before. It seems like he got a little in love with his power. And he started depending and relying upon it a little too much that he forgot what got him to the dance. Part of what makes Triple G a very effective puncher is that he breaks you down to the body, then eventually gets upstairs. And beautiful counter left hook to the body by Canelo. Once again, Triple G not matching it. If you're going to fight Canelo, you better match his body attack or you better just be bigger and more skilled and agile on your feet like Baval was. But Triple G, I mean, very effective jab. But one thing we're not seeing, his iconic right hook to the hip, you know, where he turns that punch over and knuckles into the hip. And the same punch that uh, Canelo uses as a pressure fighter in most of his fights. Now, obviously, he's not putting pressure this fight because Triple G is not going to fight fire with fire. But one thing I like that Canelo does through this fight is he does stand his ground. For him to get out of the corner, to get his back off the ropes, or to get respect, he's going to stand his ground and fight in the pocket, okay, or he's going to counter. And he does. He has a good game plan throughout this fight. I think he did enough to win, but obviously it was a draw. You know, some people argue Triple G won, you know. Yeah, Triple G landed his jab, but I didn't see him kind of follow up with too much, and his power punches seemed to fall a little bit flat. One thing that I like about Canelo, I believe he's more of the ring general in this fight than Triple G is. I believe that Canelo is dictating more of what's going on in this fight than Triple G. 
Good first round by both fighters. But yeah, it, it's it's interesting because Canelo, he just now obviously when you got a good counter puncher like Canelo, who's got some good thud in his punches, you might be a little bit wary to go downstairs against him. You might be a little bit more nervous. And I think that was part of the reason we didn't see Triple G go down to the body in both of the fights with Canelo. But if he wants that, he's going to have to do that in the third fight. Now, he's going to be slower. He's not going to be as powerful. He's not going to be as fast. But, you know, if you think it was, if you think Canelo got the upper hand in the first two fights, or at least the second fight, you know, it's not going to be pretty for Triple G in the third fight if he does not go downstairs. He has to match the body attack. The crazy thing is, I think Triple G could have won both of the fights, but he never established his body attack. He slowed down Canelo in the later rounds just based off of mirroring him with his pressure. But he did not complete everything full circle. He did not go down to the body. You know, uh, he didn't throw that iconic right hook to the hip. Uh, but only several times in this fight, so, you know, he wasn't able to seal the deal, and Canelo was able to kind of dictate more of what happened in this fight. But Canelo decided here, one thing in this game plan he did in the first fight, he decided, okay, I'm going to settle down, and I'm going to exchange with Triple G a little bit. And then later on in the round, nice clinch by Canelo, later on in the round, you know, I'll get on my skates and start to box off the back foot and look for counters. But I like how Canelo stands his ground in the beginning of each round, trying to get respect, trying to get Triple G to know, like, you're not just going to walk me down. And Canelo also understands, like, I can't be on my skates all night. You know, it's already going to be tiring boxing off the back foot. But, you know, if I stand my ground at certain points in the fight, I should be able to preserve myself and get a little bit of respect and be able to keep the center of the ring when I need it and have some real estate to work with. Good hook by Canelo, but I like how he's looking for the counter when he puts his high guard up like that. He's usually looking for that pull counter, that right hand, somewhat of a sloppy version of what Mayweather does. Obviously, nobody does that pull counter like Mayweather. But I like what Canelo's doing here. You know, he's boxing forward. He's boxing backward. He's standing in the pocket. He's he's going downstairs. He's letting combinations go. I'm seeing more variety from Canelo in this fight. And good left hook to the body by Canelo. Once again, where is Triple G's uh, counter to that? Where is the counter to the body? Where is he mashing Canelo's attack? Canelo pulling back probing with those that high guard. And he pulls back. And I like when he does that because he doesn't... Sometimes fighters... They pull out another left hook to the body by Canelo. They pull out of range. They use their feet to escape. But Canelo, he'll pull back out of range, but he'll keep his feet set. That way he can still counter. That's a nice little way to keep distance and manage it rather than resetting the action to where you have to find your distance again. You know, it's a nice way to evade and clear space without having to move your feet. Another left hook to the body by Canelo. Beautiful work. Nice little pot shots. That's one thing Canelo's a master at. Countering with pot shots to the body. One of the things I love that he does in his game. Canelo deciding, okay, I've set my feet enough. I'm going to go on the back foot and box a little bit. <coughs> and one thing you got to respect about Canelo's game plan is like a lot of good counter uppercut by Canelo. Now, even though Triple G is letting his hands go a little bit more uh to me i feel like the more effective punches especially power punches are coming from canelo and having more of an impact but uh one thing that i like that canelo did and one thing that i think fleet-footed fighters more back-footed fighters need to learn from this performance obviously one thing canelo didn't do i think he could have used a little bit more variation in getting out of the corner or getting his back off the ropes I think he could have fainted more. I think he could have L stepped out to his right. He could have clinched more. But that's one thing I really respect. He didn't need to rely on a heavy clinch game. And look at this left hook to the body. Uppercut left hook to the body. It didn't land too clean, but still. That 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 pays dividends later on in the fight. Good little 
right cross by Triple G. And notice how Triple G, he really does a good job of landing that right cross, usually against most of his opponents, is because he's kind of leaning in with it. And he's bringing that right hand a little bit closer, so it doesn't have too far to travel. But uh, the one thing that I respect that Canelo did in this fight, he's he didn't rely on the clinch too heavily to save him when Triple G cornered or backed him up to the ropes, which was very impressive. Very impressive. Instead, he said, okay, I'll stand here and I'll bang with you. Now, notice, once again, Canelo coming out to the center of the ring. He's willing to exchange. He's hanging in that pocket with Triple G, which is very dangerous. A lot of guys are not willing to do that with Triple G, especially at that point in time where Triple G was still somewhat of, uh, somewhat in his prime. Good, good hooks to the body by Canelo. Nice counters. Another left hook to the body. That beautiful work by Canelo. Getting respect. Look at Canelo. He's controlling the center of the uh, Tecate emblem. I like the variation in Canelo's guard. He'll go from a Philly shell to a high guard to a mid-range guard where it's kind of halfway up. You know, constantly giving you different looks. Nice right cross to the hip from Canelo. And still, don't see enough body work by Triple G. If he went to the body, it, it would have paid off in the later rounds, especially where Canelo got a little bit fatigued because he typically, typically does get fatigued in some fights later down in the line as the rounds go. But Triple G has a good jab, but to me, he's just not following up enough. Both men at the center of the ring. That's not a good look for Triple G, who's typically walking his opponents down. Another left hook to the solar plex. From Canelo, doesn't land flush, but still, we know if Canelo beats up your body for 12 rounds, it's not going to feel good. Canelo willing to hang. And this is why I give, metaphorically speaking, speaking if I'm judging this fight, I'm, I'm giving Canelo a lot of credit. Because it's like Triple G's not just having his way. And that's one thing that... Triple G should have used more as that lead left hook. He threw it two times there, and well, three times, landed pretty nicely. That's actually something he probably should have utilized more. You can come become a little bit too predictable if you're fall, leading everything with the jab. You know, if I know your jab is coming, I can counter it, come with the overhand, come with the uppercut or hook. You know, sometimes you got to break that fundamental rhythm and come with maybe a lead hook. You know, which he did a nice job of landing, but I don't know if that'll work in a third fight where he's older, he's slower, his reaction and timing isn't as effective as it used to be. It's a very dangerous punch to throw a lead left hook if you're not kind of in your athletic prime. Finally, he saw Triple G go to across the body, but this is the thing. You see, Canelo, he's not given too much unpredictability when it comes to skating out of the corner or the ropes. Like right here, he's just pivoting out to the left. Pivoting it out to the left. Like, usually you see Triple G throw a nice right hook to the hip. He did throw a right cross there. Didn't quite make the mark. But usually you see him throw that wide looping hook to the hip. And he'll turn it over and turn those knuckles into that hip. You're not seeing too much of that. That's also a big punch by Canelo. You know, both of them usually, that's a signature kind of uh, punch they throw throughout their fights now like i said i think both of them didn't throw it as much i saw canelo more so but both of them didn't throw it as much because obviously they're against dangerous they respect each other they respect each other's power so they're not going down there as typically i, I mean it's one thing to throw a right hook like you saw canelo do over and over and over again against amir khan who's not going to hurt you you know well he can hurt you but He's not going to threaten you with world-ending power than it is doing it against Triple G, who has very, you know, deep, thudding punches. Triple G coming out aggressively. He tends to come out aggressive in this first fight. In the uh, first, in the beginning of the round, but Canelo gets his respect, and I like this. To me, this shows that he's the ring general because it's like, no, 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 you're not just gonna back me up when you want. You know, I'm gonna stand my ground. I'm gonna show that I can hang and bang with you. I'm not gonna do that all fight long because that's not a fight I can win if I'm gonna sit there and exchange with Triple G. But I will pick my point in the fight to where I try to get your respect, and I'll get on the. Get on, and I know that left hook that Canelo just threw to Triple G's hip was very effective because Triple G 
shook his head. That usually means it hurt. But uh, I like how Canelo stands his ground. Another left hook to the body. You know, getting Triple G's respect enough to back him up. Once again, metaphorically speaking, I'm scoring a lot of points to Canelo because I'm seeing him change the way Triple G fights. Triple G fights one way. He comes forward. He bangs. You know, he cuts off the ring. Not to say he's not technical. Not to say he doesn't have a good strategy when he does this. But if I'm seeing a guy who fights a prototypically the same way throughout fights, pressure, 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 walking his opponents down, knocking them out, and I'm not seeing them do that effectively, that's, to me, that's telling me there's something going on. You know, he's being stifled. Here's Canelo looking for counters, sitting on the ropes. We know Canelo likes to sit on the ropes, take a little break and look for counters, let his opponent tee off, lull him to sleep and catch him. Canelo saying, come on, but Triple G, he's smart. Triple G, even though he's a very aggressive fighter, don't let that aggression mask his skill and his, his high IQ. I think he should have took a little bit more risk there, you know, throwing more shots to the body. You know, don't chase the head, sit there, target, even though Canelo had his guard down, go and target the chest area, you know, beat up the chest or target it. And so it can open up the guard and then maybe you can throw one to the hip or maybe you can throw one to the liver. You know, we saw Baval, you know, and Baval did the same thing, you know, when Canelo tried to bait him in. Baval was like, nah, come back to the center ring. But Baval also did take advantage of Canelo when he tried to take breaks on the ropes and landed nice combinations. You know, he's one of the first guys to do that. Nice right cross by Triple G. Obviously, he's leaning in. Triple G's more square in his stance, so that right hand's closer. So a lot of times he can land that cross the way he does very effectively. Good head movement by Canelo. You know, really should have L stepped out a little bit more, but he may have not just because of the fact that he didn't want to run into Triple G's left hook. So fair enough there. But I think he could have fainted a little bit more. But once again, you know, I don't know how well faints work against a guy like Triple G who's constantly coming at you. He may not give a fuck about your faints. You know what I'm saying? You can faint him all day. He's still going to try to walk you down. So that those are probably two reasons Possibly why Canelo didn't try to L-step to his right, didn't want to run to a hook, and maybe didn't faint a little bit more. Because I do see him faint throughout some of his fights a little bit more consistently. You know, it may have been just the type of opponent he went against, Triple G. You know, Triple G ain't going to respect your faints. He's going to walk you down, you know. But I still would have liked to see, you know, Triple G's reactions if Canelo incorporated a bit more. But one of the things I was trying to say is I really like that Canelo's not relying on the clinch to save him in the corner or the ropes. Usually he will stand his ground, put up a high guard, or he'll look for counters, hang in the pocket to try and get respect. I like that. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm not mad at fighters who have that ability to know how to, you know, clinch in a, 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 a calculated way, but... Sometimes you can get a real, uh, uh, rely on that clinch a little bit too much. But once again, Canelo's trying to get respect in the first few seconds of the round. Backing up here, Triple G controlling the center of the ring for now. But you can see Triple G's not as gun ho as he usually is in most of his fights. He's not just walking in, you know, and dropping bombs. He's very, very hesitant. And great head movement by Canelo. Good shoulder roll by Canelo. I like how he gets back on the ropes. You see, that's a sign right there. A good sign to the judges. Like, hey, I'm in control of this. He's not just pushing me back. I'm willingly bringing myself to the ropes. Good right hook to the hip. Canelo's signature, one of his signature punch punches. He throws that right hook to the hip, turns the punch over, gets Triple G's respect. Look, both of them back at the center of the ring. But I like how Canelo willingly brought himself back to the ropes. It was all, kind of a sign saying like, hey, I'm not scared of this guy. I'm going to the ropes because I want to go to the ropes. I'm setting up something here. I'm setting up a trap. He's not forcing me here. I'm willingly coming here, bringing him in here, laying traps for him to walk into. So that's also another sign that I know that, you know, I can tell Canelo's probably the more of the ring general going on. Nice little punch off the punch off the clinch by Canelo. Throws a left hook to the solar plex. And here we are. 
you know, this is why I give Canelo. I tended to lean. I, I'm, I'm cool with the draw, but I was leaning towards Canelo in this fight because I, I feel like he was doing a little bit more, showing a little bit more versatility in his boxing game. He was making Triple G do things he doesn't commonly do and uh, or stifling what he usually does best, good overhand by Triple G. And that's another thing. Sometimes it's not just about Lending punches, you guys. This is a good poker face by Canelo, but also just uh, he's putting on a good showman experience or putting on a good show because, okay, he got tagged with a big overhand right, but he's shaking his head. He's like, no, 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 you, 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 you ain't fucking with me. Like, you can hit me with your best shot. It ain't doing nothing. That's good for the judges. You got to play into the psychology of the judges. That's part of the game, and he understands that. Like, you got to show the judges, even if you don't feel in control, it's good to show them that you are in control. But I also believe Canelo genuinely wasn't too bothered by that punch because he was very aggressive in some of those exchanges and he let his hands go and he's willingly sitting there on the ropes because if that punch really bothered him that much he probably would have tried to get his back off the ropes and start evading he probably wouldn't have been shaking his head but uh good re regardless of whether that overhand affected canelo it was good showmanship and showing the judges like, no, 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 this dude ain't bothering me. He ain't doing nothing. The, the big monster, Kazakh monster, throwing big power, thundering punches, he, he can't hurt me. So it's almost like taking away his aura as well. It's a good psychological tactic he did against Triple G, you know, to take his, his, his intimidating aura away, but also a good show he's putting on for the judges because he's showing them like, yo, I'm still in control. Just because he landed that big overhand don't mean shit. We're good here. You gotta be a lot of things as a boxer. You gotta be a lot of things, man. Good overhand over the top of the left. And you know, Canelo did a nice job of rolling with it. I, I kinda believe that didn't bother him too much because I didn't see Canelo like just, I didn't see him get to, there's some punches that bothered him later on in this fight, but I don't think that one bothered him that much. Look at Canelo coming out strong, like he does good game plan with him and Reynoso. Understanding like, hey, we got to get some respect here in the beginning of the round. But Triple G catches Cano, the nice right cross there. Still, Canelo understand I can't be on my skates all fight long. That's going to wear I'm, That's gonna wear me down. I got to get respect. So he comes forward. He marches forward to get respect. And he does. He's backing up the bigger, the bigger man, supposedly the bigger puncher in some people's cases. Beautiful lead left hook, and and he's at the center of the ring. This this is not typical, you, you know. A lot of people don't do this against Triple G. You know they don't get him Triple G to respect your ground. You know, and Canelo's doing that. That's a big deal in terms of judging this fight, in my opinion. I'm not just looking at the punch stats. You know, Triple G is landing some great jabs, but what are you following up with when it comes to that jab? Triple G got good defense, you guys. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, he gets tagged with some shots, but considering he marches forward, marches forward, he really has very effective defense. He's got a very fundamental guard. You know, he does blade his body to a certain extent, even though he's a little bit more square than most other fighters. And once again, Canelo being a good showman, just playing around. Like, believe it or not, that little stuff does matter. It really does matter when it comes to convincing judges that you have control of the fight and that you're confident. You know, look at AJ, Anthony Joshua versus Usyk at the end of their first matchup. And AJ's in the corner. He's sitting on the stool. He's, you know, you can't act like that, dude. Even if you lost the fight, you got to put on a performance. Act like you're in control. Act like you're the winner. That could be the difference sometimes in a win or a loss. I can't give you the fight if you're not going to act like you won the fight. Good combos by Triple G. Did I think he doubled up on the left hook, went to the body, tapped to the body, tapped to the head. A nice little combo. Canelo gets back to the center of the ring. And that's his main tactic. 
That's his main tactic. If he wants to go back to the center of the ring, he's going to engage. He's going to stand his ground, and he's going to march forward at certain points in the fight. And, you know, more fleet-footed fighters, back-footed fighters should take note of this. You cannot just dance your way to victory, in my opinion, or rely on that unless you're going to be very, very perfect like Floyd Mayweather. And even that, that's kind of getting played out. Good head movement by Canelo pivots out, rubber necks, turns his head. Triple G tries to shoot the right hand. Um, but, you know, like Iris Landy Laura, I cannot give him the fight against Canelo. I cannot say Iris Landy Laura beat Canelo Alvarez because he never stood his ground in that fight. He never showed that he had control, that he was willingly going to the ropes or willingly going to the corner and setting up traps, which he was. But I never saw Iris Landy Laura take a stand in that fight he didn't need to sit there and fight with Canelo for 12 rounds in the pocket but when you're too intimidated or you're not willing to take the risk to to stand your ground at certain points to me then I can't quite say you were the ring general and you had control of the fight but Canelo is taking chances you know he's picking points and he's <laughs> picking points when to engage with Triple G in this matchup. So I got to give him a lot of credit for that. But he's also boxing off the back foot. And that's not something you always see Canelo do. We know he can box off the back foot. But to do it for 12 rounds against a good pressure fighter like Triple G was very impressive. And I think you saw a right hook to the hip by Triple G. Didn't see that enough. You know, you knew Canelo most of the time was dipping out to your right. So I don't know why he didn't throw that more. Nice little exchange by Triple G there. Tries to come over the top with his overhand right. One thing you also didn't see Triple G do, an iconic technique he usually utilizes a lot against his opponents, is his shift. Usually he'll shift to close the distance into the southpaw stance, and he'll follow up with multiple combinations and hooks, these wide-looping hooks, hooks that come over the top of the guard to the top of the dome. I don't think he did it a lot in this fight because he had a lot of respect for Canelo. I don't think he took those. He wanted to take those risks. And it is very dangerous. You do a fits him and shift against a good opponent who knows how to counter. If he catches you while you're shifting into the opposite stance, he can catch you off balance and hurt you. So this is why I, I favored Canelo in this fight because I seen him stifle, like change the way Triple G usually fights now yes triple g is still predominantly the one coming forward but he was going to come forward regardless but i saw him the thing is like i noticed triple g in this fight is like he was second guessing himself he wasn't as you know he wasn't as you don't see him as hesitant in most other fights but this is the power of getting respect from your opponent, standing your ground, having respectable power, good boxing skills, high IQ, good countering abilities. You get the respect of an opponent like Triple G when you're able to do that. He's not going to come in as recklessly. You know, but some people... Some people give fights to the one who's just constantly coming forward. I look a little bit more deeper than that. Finally, we see a nice... Hook to the body by Triple G. Don't see it enough. But even when he's landing his body shots or even when he's landing his power shots, they don't look as effective in this fight. Now, part of that is because the good defense by Canelo and that he's getting respect from Triple G. But uh, there's something, it's just his punches did not look sharp other than his jab. And even his jab didn't look as sharp as it usually does. But his hooks to the head, hooks to the body, just didn't look the same. Even his uppercuts. And we all seen what his uppercuts and hooks look like when he's on point. He's knocking people out. Oh, beautiful right hook to the body by Canelo. That definitely bothered Triple G. And that's something you got to also understand. Part of the reason you see that, you know, Triple G... His power shots aren't as thudding as they usually are. is because Canelo goes down to the body. He goes down to the body in this fight. So that waters Triple G's shots down. Now, like I said, if, Cane if Triple G went down to the body consistently like he usually does in the first two fights, I think he finds a way to victory. I think he beats Canelo, but he just didn't do that. He didn't do that. 
think part of that is also he's like, I don't know if I said this earlier, but he's fallen in love with his power. Some big punchers, this is what happens as their career goes on. They become too dependent on their power. Okay, and they forget the things that really made them what they are and got them to the dance. You know, being a knockout artist isn't just about having big power punches. It's about knowing how to set your punches up. It's about breaking your opponent down with body shots. It's about putting pressure, knowing how to mirror with footwork, you know, stuff like that. Being a knockout artist, there's a lot of big punches. That doesn't necessarily mean they're knockout artists. Because to be a knockout artist, you have to be a master you have to be a superb boxer. You have to have a game plan. You know, you have to set things up. It's a lot of qualities you have to have to become a knockout artist. And Canelo coming out the first few seconds of the beginning of the round, standing his ground. We have a countering boxing match going on here. This is not what you're accustomed to see Triple G doing, boxing in circles against his opponent or backing up as much. Usually we see him... Beautiful body shots by Canelo as Triple G tries to clinch. Canelo steps back and rips two to the body. Beautiful. <coughs> you know, I think a big mistake by Triple G is after he got beat by Canelo, it's like he wanted to turn more into a slick boxer. So he changed his trainer. He changed Abel Sanchez. And I, I just didn't agree with that. I think he should have stuck with Abel Sanchez. I think Abel Sanchez gets the best out of Triple G. He makes him as good as he can with his attribute and abilities. I don't want to see Triple G turn into a boxer. That's not what he does. I mean, don't get it twisted. Pressure fighting is boxing, you guys. But I'm just saying in the prototypical form of saying, you know, how we use the term boxing. I, I don't want to see him box in circles. I want to see him cut off the ring. I want to see those power shots. I want to see him go down to the body. I want to see him put effective pressure. You know, I, I don't need to see Triple G trying to, to 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 fight like, you know, Floyd Mayweather or some shit like that. <coughs> and you see, when Triple G got Canelo to ropes, he's not. He doesn't always take advantage. Like I said, it's almost like he's second-guessing himself. Usually, you'll see him throw that right cross. He'll lean in, throw that right cross. Sometimes, he'll even frame his opponent with him with that right hand, and he'll follow up with the left hook, and you're not seeing that. <clears throat> Good upper cut by Canelo getting his back off the ropes. Good hook, pivoting hook, back to the center of the ring by Canelo. Like I said, some feints would have helped. May have been. It would have been interesting to see how Triple G would have reacted from some feints. Not seeing a lot of them from Canelo. <coughs> I like that. Changes it up. Gets caught on the ropes. Tries to lead with the right hand. Ooh, nice. Instead of hooking to the head to get out, get back to the center of the ring, he hooks the body. Now, Triple G's phenomenal. I cut. Oh, there's the iconic right hook to the hip by Triple G. Canelo didn't like it, and you know it bothered him because he shook his head and complained about it. But uh, we needed to see, that's one thing he should have done more of. I just don't understand. Like, Canelo was perfectly lined up for that right hook to the hip. And he just, he, he I don't know. It's, I guess too much respect or, you know, lost sight of what he usually does. Just didn't throw it, uh, throw it enough. I think if he did, it would have made a difference in the later rounds. Because, yes, Canelo got tired. He got worn out. Uh, he got... He got exhausted, but he was always able to kind of catch his, a second wind, you know, and recover. You know, like I said, I love the game plan by him and Reynoso. Boom. <coughs> nice uppercut. Nice uppercut by Canelo. Canelo kind of pulled back with it, though. Canelo did a good job of kind of rolling with Triple G's shots. That did a lot of taking the sting off the uh, the punches of Triple G. Once again, Canelo trying to stand his <coughs> ground in the center of the ring. <coughs> Once again, <coughs> sorry guys. <coughs> now you saw in these series of exchanges, Canelo keeps on throwing the uppercut hook to the body. He threw three, the same combination. There we go, boom. <clears throat> I saw him throw that combination four times within a series of 30 seconds. Uppercut hook to the body. Uppercut hook to the body. 
It makes a huge difference, dude. <coughs> I think I got the Rona, you guys. <coughs> And see, like, <laughs> here I want to see more from Triple G. He's just very tentative with his punches. And his punches don't look as sharp. <coughs> Usually you see Triple G just absolutely annihilate opponents when he has them right there. He gets in that, you know, has them close quarters. He's usually ripping double hooks to the body. Nice hooks to the head. Coming over the top of the guard. Just looks very hesitant. Ooh, beautiful overhand. Triple G eats it like it's nothing. I think Triple G rolled with it pretty well, though. <laughs> yeah, Canelo didn't even need the clinch heavy, you know, for this fight. That's what makes this impressive. He's going up against a monster pressure fighter, and he didn't re need to rely on his clinch to get him out of it. It's not a clinch heavy fight. You know, a lot of guys they need to 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 clinch against the pressure fighter like Triple G. <coughs> Once again, Triple G gets to the inside. He's not doing too much with it. You see, he's so hesitant because he missed that hook, right? He throws that hook that he usually lands all the time. And it's almost like he's he's not committing to it. Canelo got so much, he's not willing to really commit to it. Now, that was a nice combination. He did land a nice combo there. But you don't see him committing to those punches. And it's almost like he steps out of range because he doesn't want to be in there. You know, you got him cornered. How are you missing a hook? That's because Triple G would step back. He didn't want to be in there. And I like how Canelo sometimes walk you into a punch. He'll kind of step back and he'll use your momentum. He'll throw a nice right uppercut. He'll kind of pull back, pull back, all of a sudden plant his feet, come with a nice uppercut, you know, and it really gets good respect from his opponent. Yeah, Canelo, say what you want. Yeah, he lost to Baval. You know, I, I just don't get boxing fans. You know, I always knew Canelo was beatable, but, you know, what is with this garbage? Like, if you lose to a good fighter, like, now you're just, we dispose of you. You know, like, obviously, yes, I do want to see Canelo step up against some guys that I think will match up very well against him. But the dude can box. There's no doubt about it. Good right hand by Triple G. Good defense by Triple G. Ooh, but gets caught with the hook. Canelo's hook gets there first. Beautiful. And see, that's a tricky overhand, right? By Triple G. Triple G does a good job of rubbernecking that overhand, right? It's just, Canelo can be tricky sometimes because sometimes he'll throw from the hip. And he'll set it up with body punches, right? And you think he's going to throw a body punch. And then he starts bringing it back to the over top and he catches you. I think he does that with his left hook as well. Sometimes he'll start from the hip almost as if. And he'll set it up with body punches. And you think he's going downstairs and then he just brings it up at the end. Good job by Triple G. But Canelo standing in, standing in the center of the ring, letting his hands go. You know, this is we're not accustomed to seeing Triple G give so much respect to an opponent. I don't know if Triple G slipped there, but Canelo steps in. Another left hook to the body. Beautiful combinations, nice uppercuts. Hanging and banging. This is not good if you're Triple G. It doesn't look good to the judges. Like, why is the little man backing this monster up, the monster pressure fighter. Ooh, good exchanges here. Both of them head-to-head, -head, high guards. Canelo, you can see he's, he's kind of damn tired, and rightfully so. He's fighting off the back foot. This is not what he does. You know, you don't. You, we know Canelo can fight off the back foot, but we don't usually see him do it purely for twelve rounds, right? You know, we don't see too many guys who are more aggressive than him. Usually, he's the one putting pressure. You know, and it, there's pockets in fights where he'll back up and set up traps and kind of walk his opponents. 
into punches. But this is why it's even more impressive to me and why I, I essentially thought he did enough to win this fight, even though it was a draw. is because he was doing things that we don't typically see him do, but he was doing them fairly effectively. It's not easy to fight off the back foot. People think it's more tiring walking forward. It's absolutely more exhausting fighting off the back foot for 12 rounds than it is trying to walk an opponent down. Don't get me wrong. You're going to get tired doing either one of them, right, for 12 rounds. But, like... The best thing I say is, like, run backwards, okay? Take a few miles and run backwards and tell me how you feel compared to running forwards. Or get on a treadmill if, you know, if you have the ability, you know, start running backwards or skipping backwards, which I can do. Absolutely more exhausting than, than running forward. Absolutely more exhausting. It's not fun fighting off the back foot for 12 rounds, even as a trained, even if it's your trained style. I mean, because... It's constant, and then you have to deal with the mental pressure of your opponent who likes putting pressure. And then you gotta plant your feet, you gotta stick, and then you know you gotta reset, you gotta think. There's lots of stuff going on mentally and physically, okay, that you have to deal with fighting off that back foot. It's absolutely exhausting. And here you see Canelo, you know, trying to stand his ground, get his respect. Good defense, pulls back. You know, so I got to give Cano a lot of credit. You know, when Triple G backs up, it's to reset, right? It's to reset. You don't see Triple G going off the back foot, you know, looking for counters and, you know, fainting and, you know, you, you don't see that. So I was more impressed with how Canelo showed so much versatility. I can fight coming forward. I can fight going backward. I can move laterally. I can fight in the pocket. I can throw combinations. I can go downstairs. I can pot shot. You know, I can show different shades of defense. I can change up my guard as opposed to Triple G. I'm coming forward. I'm coming forward. I'm putting pressure. But if it's not working, damn, I wish I saw that replay. Nice hook. Ooh, beautiful combo. I think he just came came off balance. Triple G was off balance. With Triple G, he does one thing, right? Prototypically through most of his fights, but he's not able to do it. Uh, he's not able to do what he usually does at its height. So that tells me Canelo is the ring general. You know, the, don't be deceived by the aggression. That doesn't always tell the story. You know, sometimes it does, right? But definitely not here. You know, I seen more Triple G out of character than Canelo. I mean, Canelo's out of character, right? Because he's fighting off the back foot predominantly and that right hook to the hip. If I'm Triple G, I'm going straight back. I'm turning that right hook over to the hip again. You know, don't let, once again, and look at Canelo, comes back with a left hook, matches the attack, body attack for Triple G, understanding it's like a game of tag. You tag me to body, I'll tag you to body. Triple G did not realize that. Triple G is even turning his uh, right hook to, to the head instead of the hip. You know, but once again, good showmanship, good psychological tactic by Canelo to sit there and put tap at uh, his belt strap and say, hey, you hit me behind the back or, you know, you hit me too low with that right hook. And Triple G respected it. He respected it. If I'm Triple G, I'm like, fuck you. I'm going to throw. I go straight back there and be like, take that with you. You know, but Triple G, you know, Canelo even had the advantage psychologically over him. I mean, he was pretty much imposing, you know, his psychological will on him to a certain extent because he got Triple G to stop throwing his right, his, one of his best punches, his right hook to the hip. You know, he got him to stop just by sitting there and saying, hey, you're cheating, you know, or you, you, you hit me low or, you know, however you want to phrase that. Nonetheless, it stopped Triple G from throwing it. It discouraged him from doing that. You know, and I don't think Triple G is scared. I just think, you know, he's, he's a very honorable dude. You know, and Canelo kind of used that against him. You know, Triple G doesn't want to be seen as a cheater or he's like, you know, anything like that. So Canelo kind of took advantage of that psychologically, but that's what you got to do is, you know, in fights like these where you got to get every single edge you can possibly get. You got to be able to get it psychologically, mentally, physically, emotionally. And that's what Canelo did here, man. He did a little bit more. To me, I seen a more complete picture from Canelo, then Triple G. Good combos by Triple G. 
But you, you, you don't see Canelo panicking every time he gets into the corner. You don't see him panicking. He's willing to sit there and exchange a little bit. I just wish he used a little bit more. Ooh, beautiful uppercut by Triple G. That one stunned Canelo. But once again, willing to stay and hang and bang, get some respect. You can tell Canelo's very tired because he's got his guard down. But thankfully, he's a pretty versatile fighter. He tries to L-step his way out to the right. The thing is, if we saw Canelo and he was unsuccessful fighting off the back foot, you know, then that's a different story. Then I'm giving the edge to Triple G. But I see Canelo having success at different moments. But look, man, uh, I don't really care for the third fight, but I will watch it. I'm more interested in it to see how Canelo comes out and performs because there is some pressure, I think, on Canelo. Triple G, I don't think he has much to lose. He wins, right? He's going out with a big payday. He's going to try to, you know, get a W here. And who knows if somehow he pulls it out of his ass, you know, you may get another fight. You know, he may drag Canelo into another fight. But I'll get into that after the 12th and final round. We'll talk a little bit more about the third fight. Good hook by Canelo. And Canelo coming out strong like he does. And most rounds, beautiful uppercut. That, Triple G did not like that. That made him very hesitant. Look at Triple G, very hesitant. When he got hit with that, I believe it was an uppercut to the head. It really, really watered him down. It, it changed Triple G's demeanor. Triple G's a tough guy, you know, obviously. But look at Canelo here, standing his ground, throwing combinations, saying, let's go, big dog. You're supposed to be the beast, the pressure fighter. Let's go, boom. Nice hooks. Canelo putting that high guard up, saying, let's engage. But still boxing, you know, half-stepping his way back, looking for counters. And good boom, my Canelo. Both of them exchange, and, and that's where you don't want to get caught with Triple G. And that's a, where Triple G, in my opinion, got a little bit, bit of an advantage in that last exchange was you don't just want to throw with Triple G. You don't just want to go tit for tat. You pick your counters in a very precise, calculated manner, and then you move. Okay, and then reset and go back to it. But don't you don't ever just want to get in a firefight to where you're just going to see who has bigger balls. Because he's going to win those exchanges. Good jab by Triple G. Landed lots of jabs, but, you know, you got to follow up with very effective power punches, in my opinion. The jab didn't, to me, the jab wasn't so impactful to where he changed the fight. That dude, like, really controlled it. Now, if he controlled the fight with his jab to where Canelo's not throwing counters and Canelo's hesitant and Canelo is not standing his ground or trying to back him up. See, if that that jab, the way Triple G controlled David Lemieux, right, to where Lemieux just, he, he froze Lemieux, then that's where I'm sitting there saying, okay, yeah, that fight won him the jab. Or that jab won him the fight. And once again, Canelo lands an uppercut earlier a few seconds ago. And definitely changes the demeanor of Triple G. Mm, beautiful uppercut. It's crazy. Canelo doesn't really throw his jab as much as, you know, that much. But, you know, that's what counter punchers do. They don't want to give you the lead. They want to counter what you got. And see, like this, you don't want, like, once again, smart by Canelo. But just smart enough at the end to get out. He was playing with fire right there. You do not want to just throw with Triple G. That's stupid. You don't just want to just throw. Like it's got to be very calculated and controlled and catered. You know, once you start doing that, like he's gonna win that every day, all day. But overall, I would have leaned toward Canelo. I would have gave him the W in the first fight. I'm not mad at the draw, but you know, I know a lot of people thought Triple G won the first fight. 
with his jab, but to me, it, the jab didn't make such an impact. Even though he was landing, it didn't like completely influence Canelo's game and change his demeanor. You know, like you saw the way Triple G used his jab against fucking David Lemieux to where like literally jab, 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 and David Lemieux just, he froze. He froze. There was nothing he could do. He couldn't get around it. He couldn't land combinations. Couldn't counter. So I, I couldn't give too much credit to Triple G's jab in this fight. He landed it. It was, it was good, but uh, I don't think it did enough. I don't think it changed the demeanor of uh, Canelo Alvarez. Let's see these exchanges. Good, good. Beautiful combos. Beautiful uppercut. Beautiful. I mean, beautiful. He landed most of those punches. Triple G, the dog, saying, let's go, keep going. Nice jab. Right hand didn't quite make the mark. Left hand, Canelo rolled with it. But like I said, when you start doing this right here with Triple G, he's going to get the better. You can't just throw. But it was the end of the fight. Canelo's smart enough to understand, like, I want to leave a good impression on the judges. But last three seconds, he said, okay, I need to get out of here. I did enough. I don't want to get knocked down the last five seconds of the goddamn fight when I've pretty much done enough to win it. But like I said, I think I believe it's a draw. So for the third fight, third fight, you know, there's no business, there's no reason Triple G should even make, this should be a competitive fight. I'm not saying it shouldn't be competitive, but it shouldn't be, that's crazy. I, I just don't know how you could have 116 to 112. But, you know, a lot of judges and a lot of these people who score fights, they favor, you know, coming forward, which I disagree. You have to look deeper into it to really give a fighter, you know, that much credit for coming forward. It has to be effective aggression. But uh, third fight, it's intriguing for this and this only. How is what, What's Canelo going to be like? He just came off a loss. You know, he just came. That's the only reason this fight is intriguing because he just came off of a loss. You know, but we the good thing for Canelo is he has tasted an L before. Uh, he has bounced back supremely well. And he has been in a lot of fights to where he's questionably lost. Some people would make the argument he's questionably lost. Like this one. Uh, so he, he's not accustomed to being in this place to where he's got to come back from a, a rough performance. Right? This My concern is... He didn't look sharp in his last fight against Bivol. He didn't look sharp. I don't know if it was the weight, you know, because I saw Canelo. I don't know what he specifically did and how much he put on, but I saw Canelo against Kovalev, and he looked absolutely sharp. But then you see him against Bivol, and maybe it was just the size. I think Bivol is just a lot more thicker than Kovalev, and maybe the punches just didn't look like they were effective because Bivol was so big but also I know he went vegan in that camp now by no means am I saying that Canelo lost that fight because he went vegan I don't believe that I believe he loses that fight nine times out of ten against Bivol I don't think he's beaten Bivol okay unless he he has to box a very perfect boxing match and he has to have activity and volume that I don't think he's going to have against an opponent like Bavol. So I don't think that, I'm not making excuses for Canelo. But I do believe going vegan can impact you into, you know, you're not going to perform the same way you would if you're, you've been a meat eater your whole life. I just, I, I don't know. I don't agree that he went vegan. I think that was, a, you know, drop your sack, dude. You, you know, eat your meat. Eat those fucking Mexican tacos with the fucking carne asada or whatever the fuck. You know, and stop being a bitch. You know, this whole vegan bullshit. Yeah, you can kind of compensate for it when, you know, you're wealthy. You have a good nutritionist. You know, they can give you vitamin, you know, supplements that most normal average people can't afford or normal boxers with their budget. But I don't think it helped them. I just don't. Eat meat. You know, eat your meat. Uh, I, I do think he came in that fight a little bit. You know, he just didn't look. His part, punches didn't look good. But, yet, you know, yeah, it could have been solely because Bival was just better, higher IQ'd, and just bigger. It's too big to where 
you know, Canelo just didn't look sharp. But I do think that played a role. Like I said, it doesn't matter if Canelo changed his diet or not. He would have lost that fight. But I do think it played an impact. So hopefully he returns to, uh, you know, getting his protein the traditional way, you know, which is eating a good steak. Because it, believe it or not, it does. It makes a difference. It makes a difference. You know, I tried different diets, and there's diets where I'm like, when I, I'm not eating meat, I feel weak, man. I feel weak. You know, I don't feel as effective. But uh, it will be interesting to see Canelo if he comes out, if he's sharp. Uh, I think there is some pressure on him in this fight because even if he wins, a win won't just be good enough. You have to have a dominant performance. You know, you got to get a knockout. And if you're not going to get a knockout, then you better outclass this dude. Like, it better be as clear as day. It doesn't need... If it's close like the first fight, then it's not going to be a good look for Canelo. And then you already got these young guns, these young bloods, these new killers. Benavidez, David Morrell, you know, Andrade, you know, uh, uh, Charlo. They're all chomping at the bit. They already seen that you're vulnerable against Bavall, and now they're really going to be chomping out the bit if you don't get old Triple G out. You know, you don't want to give them confidence. You know, at least put it in the back of their head. The only reason I lost, okay, is because I went up in weight class, and this guy was just too big. You know, you guys, you're not going to have as much of an advantage in that area. So you have to eliminate. You come back down. You make a statement against Triple G. Because if you don't do it, it's it's not looking good for Canelo. It's not looking good for him if he does not have a dominant performance. So there's some pressure on him for this fight. That's the only reason it's intriguing because he lost to Bavall. I don't blame him for getting a tune-up. Get your confidence back. Beat up on an old Triple G, but you better damn do it. Because you know Triple G, I want to sleep on Triple G completely, you guys. He may have not been excited for the Murata fight and some of the other past fights he has. I think he's been looking to avenge his losses and these draws against Canelo. So I think Triple G, he's going to come to fight. He's going to be in the best shape. My only thing with Triple G is like I don't like that he's with the trainer he's with. I don't like that he scrapped Abel Sanchez. He looked very old against Murata. He looked old and slow. And, you know, how much can he reverse the clock? I don't know. But I, I think the good news for Triple G is he has nothing to lose. He's going to get a big payday. And I think he really wants to avenge this, this loss. You know, I think he likes fighting Canelo. And I think he's going to get up for this fight. It's going to be a, a, a big crowd. You know, a lot of people are going to come see it nonetheless. So, I think more of the pressure's on Canelo. He has to come back strong. And I don't think his next fight, if unless Canelo retires, I don't think that he has an easy road after that. There's no more... You're not in the driver's seat. And after hearing that the Baval fight didn't do too well, I think in numbers, if I'm not mistaken... You're not in the driver's seat. You're not going to get just the pick and choose, you know, very calculated fight. Your ass has got to deal with the dogs behind you. So we'll see. We'll see, man. But uh, I will be doing the rematch. I will be checking that. I haven't seen that fight in a while, so I'm kind of excited to do another film study uh, to see the rematch. And I will be doing uh, the Murata, and I'll probably check out the Baval fight with Canelo. Even though that fight will look nothing like this Triple G versus Canelo matchup, I'm looking forward to it. So uh, comment down below, like the video, subscribe. If there's any fights you want me to do breakdowns of, put them in the comment section below. It's your boy, have it final round. Hope you enjoyed the video. Get at me.